Greetings to everyone, especially our young adults keen to unravel the depths of biblical wisdom. Today, we embark on a journey through Genesis chapters 1 to 11, a section that elevates beyond historical chronicles into a sphere of theological reflection and philosophical inquiry. The session is designed to offer our audience a deeper understanding of these initial chapters of Genesis. We aim to shift our focus from the literal, literal how of creation to the profound why underlying these narratives and their enduring relevance to our faith and life. Theological context of Genesis chapters 1 to 11. Genesis chapters 1 to 11 transcends the conventional boundaries of a historical account, elevating itself to the realm of poetic and theological expression. This scripture is not about chronicling events in a linear or factual manner. Instead, it uses poetic devices, rich symbolism, and profound theological insights to convey deeper truths about the nature of God, the universe, and humanity. The ancient Near East was a cradle of civilization, each with its own set of myths and gods, often portraying humans as subservient beings created to serve the whims of capricious deities. Deeply embedded in the cultural fabric of these societies, shape their understanding of the cosmos and their place within it. Genesis 1 to 11, in this context, emerges as a bold and revolutionary narrative that refutes this politistic and anthropocentric worldviews. Monotheism and the supremacy of a single creator. At the heart of Genesis 1 to 11 is the proclamation of monotheism. It introduces a singular, all powerful God, stark contrast to the pantheons of gods in surrounding cultures. This God does not just preside over one aspect of the natural world, but is the sovereign creator of all that exists. This narrative elevates the concept of God beyond the limited and often human-like deities of pagan needs. A challenge to the Enuma Elish and similar myth. The Babylonian Enuma Elish, a creation myth where God, battle, and humans are an afterthought, serves as a backdrop against which Genesis 1 to 11 can be contrasted. Unlike this myth, where creation is a byproduct of a divine conflict, Genesis portrays creation as a deliberate and orderly process executed by a God who is in control and has a plan. This theological narrative challenges the chaotic and violent universe depicted in Enuma Elish, offering a vision of a cosmos created out of love and purpose. One of the most revolutionary ideas in Genesis 1-11 to is portrayal of humans as created in the image of God. This notion radically differs from ancient myths where humans were often depicted as slaves of the gods, created from lesser materials or as an afterthought. In Genesis, humans are endowed with dignity, purpose, and a specific place in creation. This concept reshapes the understanding 
of human identity and destiny, emphasizing intrinsic value and purpose. Genesis 1 to 11 is rich in theological themes, the nature of God as creator and sustainer, the intrinsic goodness of creation, the dignity of human beings, the tragedy of human disobedience, and the promise of redemption. These themes are interwoven in a narrative that invites reflection and interpretation, far beyond a mere retelling of events. The Poetic Nature of Genesis the poetic structure of Genesis 1 to 11, with its repetitive phrases, structured sequences, such as the six days of creation and symbolic language, enhances its theological messages. The poetry in Genesis is not about rhythm and rhyme, but about embedding profound truths in memorable and impactful narratives. Conclusion, Genesis 1-11 to as a foundation for Judeo-Christian thought. In summary, Genesis 1-11 to serves as a foundational text for Judeo-Christian theology and worldview. It challenges ancient and contemporary notions of divinity and humanity, offering a vision of a world created with intention and purpose, governed by a God who is both transcendent and immanent. This scripture invites believers and scholars alike to explore the depths of its theological and poetic richness, uncovering timeless truths about God, creation, and humanity. Let us take a look at the six days of creation. A symbolic framework. In the Genesis account, the creation of the universe is described as occurring over six distinct days. This framework is not just a chronological ordering but a symbolic and structural presentation of the creation process. It offers a profound insight into the nature of God as a deliberate and wise creator who brings order and purpose to the cosmos. The first half of the creation narrative focuses on the formation of various realms or environments. Day one, light and darkness. The creation begins with God bringing light into existence, separate, separating it from darkness. This act is symbolic of introducing order into chaos, a theme that resonates throughout the entire creation narrative. Light, often associated with knowledge, goodness, and divine presence, is the first step in shaping a structural world. Day 2, Water and Sky the second day involves the separation of water, creating a firmament known as the sky. This separation establishes the heavens and the earthly realm, further organizing the primordial chaos into distinct domains. It reflects the theme of separation and order, essential in ancient cosmologies. Let's go to day three. Land and Vegetation On the third day, dry land emerges from the waters and vegetation is created. This act not only signifies the establishment of the terrestrial realm, but also introduces the concept of life and sustenance. The emergence of land and plants sets the stage for more complex forms of life. Day 4. Let's go to day 4. The second half of the narrative corresponds to the first, now focusing on populating these realms. Celestial Bodies On the fourth day, God creates the sun, 
moon, and stars to populate the realm of light and darkness created on day one. These celestial bodies are not just physical lights, but also serve as timekeepers and symbols of God's governance over time and seasons. Day 5. Aquatic and avian life. The fifth day sees the creation of creatures that inhabit the realms of water and sky formed on day 2. This includes all forms of aquatic life and birds. The filling of these realms with life signifies the flourishing and diversity of God's creation. What about day 6? Terrestrial beings and humanity. The final day involves creating animals to inhabit the land and most significantly, the creation of humans. Humanity's creation culminates in the process of populating the realms and uniquely, humans are made in the image of God, reflecting a special relationship with the Creator. Let us take a look at the symbolism and theological implications. Each day of creation holds deep symbolic and theological significance. The structured progression from forming realms to, to populating them illustrates a universe that is not random or chaotic, but is created with intention and purpose. This narrative framework portrays a cosmos that is interconnected, where every element has its place and purpose, under the sovereignty of a wise and omnipotent creator. Conclusion Understanding the six days of creation. In conclusion, the six days of creation in Genesis are far more than a mere chronological account. They offer a rich tapestry of symbolism and meaning, reflecting deep theological truths about God's nature as the creator. This structured approach to creation speaks to the order, wisdom, and deliberate intent of God in shaping the universe, setting the foundation for intricate and harmonious existence of all life. Humanity's distinctive role in creation, the concept of Imago Dei. In the creation narratives of Genesis 1 and 2, a pivotal moment is the crafting of humanity in the image of God, often referred to as Imago Dei. This concept is central to understanding the unique status and role of humans in the biblical account of creation. Being made in God's image means that humans are endowed with qualities that reflect aspects of God's character, intellect, free will, and the capacity for love and relationality. This endowment elevates humans above the rest of creation, establishing a unique connection with the Creator. The gift of intellect allows humans to understand, reason, and make choices that impact their lives and the world around them. It enables creativity, problem solving, and the development of culture and society. Free will, closely tied to intellect, is the ability to make choices independently, an attribute that allows humans to shape their destiny and interact with the world and God in meaningful ways. Capacity for love and relationship. Humans are created for relationships, both with each other and with God. The ability to love, to form deep, enduring bonds, to care for others, to show empathy and compassion is a reflection of God's love. This relational aspect is critical in understanding humanity's role in the world, 
emphasizing the importance of community, cooperation, and mutual care. Stewardship and Dominion The narrative tasks humans with the stewardship over the earth. This role involves more than mere dominion or control. It implies a responsibility to care for, manage, and protect the environment. The acts of naming the animals, tilling the land, and keeping the garden are symbolic actions that represent this stewardship. They signify an intimate relationship between humans and the rest of creation, where humans are both caretakers and beneficiaries of the Earth's resources. Balancing Privileges and Responsibility While being made in God's image bestows a privileged position upon humanity, it also brings with it a significant responsibility. Humans are to reflect God's character in their dominion, exercising wisdom, compassion, and justice. The biblical mandate is not for exploitative or destructive rule, but for nurturing and sustaining the created order. Humanity in the broader, broader cosmic narrative. In the broader context of the biblical narrative, humanity's role is integral to the unfolding story of creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. The human ability to choose love and relate becomes central in this grand narrative, affecting not only the human condition, but the state of the whole creation. In summary, the portrayal of humanity in Genesis 1-2 to as created in the image of God establishes a distinct and vital role for humans in the cosmic order. This role, characterized by intellect, free will, the capacity for love, and the responsibility of stewardship, sets the foundation for understanding the human condition and our relationship with the rest of creation. It is a role that entails both privilege and profound responsibility, calling humans to reflect the character of their creator in their interaction with the world. The Sabbath, Symbolism and Significance In the creation narrative of Genesis, the Sabbath or the seventh day holds a place of profound significance. It's not merely a cessation of work or a pause in the routine of creation, but it represents a culmination of God's creative activity. This day stands as a testament to the completeness and perfection of what God has fashioned. Unlike the human notion of rest, which often stems from tiredness or the need to recuperate, the divine rest of the Sabbath is about celebration and sanctification of the finished work. The symbolism of divine rest. The divine rest on the seventh day is emblematic of the perfection and completeness of creation. It's an affirmation that everything created by God was not only good, but was part of a harmonious and purposely designed universe. This rest implies a, mo a moment of reflection and satisfaction in the totality of creation, an acknowledgement of its intri intrinsic goodness and interdependence. The Sabbath as a sanctification of time. The institution of the Sabbath sanctifies time itself. By resting on the seventh day, God imparts a sacred quality to this time, setting it apart from the ordinary flow of days and activities. This sanctification 
serves as a reminder that time is not just a sequence of moments to be filled with endless labor, but includes sacred intervals for reflection, rest, and rejuvenation. Let us see the Sabbath as a model of dignity and freedom. The Sabbath also stands as a model of dignity and freedom for all creation. It breaks the continuous cycle of work, reminding humanity that life is not solely about productivity and labor. This day provides an opportunity to step back from daily toils and appreciates the broader aspects of existence, like relationships, beauty, spirituality, and the wonder of creation itself. The theological and moral implications of the Sabbath. Theologically, the Sabbath is a recurring invitation to recognize and honor the Creator. It offers a space to reconnect with God, to remember His sovereignty, and to give thanks for the blessings of life. Morally, it serves as a reminder of the need for balance between work and rest, between doing and being, and between human activity and divine providence. The concept of the Sabbath invites humans to emulate the harmony and balance evident in creation. It underscores the idea that all creation is interlinked and there is a time for activity and a time for rest. This rhythm is integral to maintaining the equilibrium of life, echoing the balance and rhythmic nature of creation as intended by God. The Sabbath is a source of renewal. Beyond rest, the Sabbath is a source of renewal, spiritual, emotional, and physical. It provides a space for introspection, for reorienting oneself towards the divine, and for nurturing the soul. In the busyness of life, the Sabbath emerges as a sanctuary in time, a haven for recharging and reconnecting with the deeper truths of existence. Conclusion, embracing the Sabbath in contemporary life. In our modern, fast-paced world, where the demarcation between work and rest is increasingly blurred, the concept of the Sabbath becomes ever more relevant. It invites us to rediscover the rhythm of divine rest and activity, to appreciate the sanctity of time, and to embrace the balance and harmony that God intended for His creation. The Sabbath, therefore, is not just a historical or religious concept, but a living principle that can guide our lives together, a more holistic and fulfilling existence. The Fall in Eden, a turning point in human history. In Genesis 3, we encounter the transformative event of Adam and Eve's disobedience, a moment that has profound theological and existential implications. This narrative, in replete with rich symbolism, explores the dynamics of human free will, the allure of temptation, and the ensuing rapture in the relationship between humanity and God. The fall is not just a simple act of disobedience. It represents a fundamental shift in the human condition, a departure from the original state of innocence and harmony with the divine. The forbidden fruit, central to this narrative, symbolizes the allure of knowledge and autonomy apart from God. The act of eating the fruit prompted by the serpent's temptation is a metaphor for humanity's decision 
to define good and evil on their terms, rejecting God's authority and wisdom. This act signifies a desire for independence that ultimately leads to a profound sense of loss and alienation. What is the role of free will and temptation? Free will is a key theme in this passage. Adam and Eve's choice to eat the forbidden fruit illustrates the inherent freedom God has given to humanity. The freedom to choose even if that choice leads away from him. The serpent's role in the story highlights the persuasive nature of temptation, portraying how easily humans can be swayed from obedience and trust in God. The serpent's cunning words introduce doubt and desire, leading to the faithful decision that changes the course of human history. The consequence of disobedience. The immediate aftermath of the fall is the loss of innocence and the onset of shame, fear, and blame. The once harmonious relationship between humans and God is now marked by estrangement and hiding. The narrative conveys the disobedience to God brings about not only spiritual but also physical and relational consequences, altering the very fabric of creation. The fall disrupts the original harmony of creation. The, this disruption is not limited to Adam and Eve, personal experience. It extends to the natural world, affecting the entire created order. The ground is cursed, childbirth becomes painful, and relational dynamics are marred by struggle and domination. The fall introduces decay, suffering, and death into the world elements previously absent in the paradisiacal state of the Garden of Eden. The ongoing relevance of the fall. The story of the fall in Genesis 3 continues to resonate with profound relevance. It addresses the universal human experience of temptation, the complex nature of free will, and the consequences of our choices. It speaks to the human condition, marked by a continual struggle between obedience to God and the lure of autonomy. Conclusion A foundational narrative with lasting impact. Genesis 3 presents a foundational narrative that has shaped theological understanding and human self perception throughout history. The fall of Adam and Eve is a story that continues to inform our understanding of sin, free will, and the human propensity to stray from divine guidance. It is a narrative that underscores the need for redemption and the ongoing quest for reconciliation with God, setting the stage for the unfolding story of salvation in the biblical canon. Trust in God, central in the human narrative. In the narrative arc of Genesis 1-11, to the pivotal theme of uh, trust in God's goodness and providence emerges as a fundamental element. The story of Adam and Eve's fall in Genesis 3 poignantly illustrates how sin essentially stems from a breakdown in this trust. This breach is not merely about breaking a command, but reflects a deeper crisis, a shift in how humans perceive and relate to God. The fall, a crisis of trust and obedience. The act of eating the forbidden fruit, instigated by the serpent's deception, symbolizes a moment where humanity chooses to trust its judgment over God's command. This choice reflects a desire for autonomy, 
and self-determination that directly challenges the trust and dependence on God that characterize the original relationship. The fallout from this act is not just a primitive response from God, but a natural consequence of stepping away from the intimate relationship they were created to enjoy. The narratives in Genesis 1 to 11 highlight the complex interplay of free will, temptation, and consequences. Free will is presented as an intrinsic part of human nature, a gift from God that allows for genuine relationship and love. However, with this gift comes the possibility of misusing it as exemplified in the Garden of Eden. The serpent's role in the story underscores the reality of temptation, an ever-present factor in the human experience, inviting individuals to question God's word and pursue their desires. Reflecting on Human Relationships with the Divine These early chapters of Genesis provoke deep reflection on the nature of human relationships with God. They depict how easily trust can be eroded and how quickly humans can be, can be inclined to doubt and disobey. The stories serve as a mirror, reflecting the ongoing struggle of faith, obedience, and trust that define the human journey. They also emphasize the need for humility and dependence on God, acknowledging the limitations of human understanding and the dangers of pride. Implications for Human Relationships with Creation and Each Other Moreover, the narrative explored the implications of trust in God for human relationships with creation and each other. The fall results in a disruption of the original harmony, affecting not only human-divine relations, but also human interaction with the environment and interpersonal relationships. The stories illustrate how a breach of trust in the divine can lead to a ripple effect impacting all aspects of life and creation. In conclusion, a call to re-examine trust in the divine. The message of trust in God woven through Genesis 1 to 11 resonates with timeless relevance. It calls for a re examination of our understanding of sin, not merely as a violation of rules, but as a fundamental breach of trust in God's goodness and plan. These narratives challenge us to ponder our relationship with God, the natural world, and each other urging us to restore trust where it has been broken and to seek reconciliation. On the fall and promise in Genesis 3, understanding sin, consequence, and God's mercy. Genesis 3 is a chapter fundamental to understanding humanity's relationship with sin and divine mercy. This pivotal event in human history, the fall of Adam and Eve, illuminates the profound consequences of disobedience towards God and sets the stage for our understanding of sin, free will, and redemption. The profound uh, consequences of the fall. The fall of Adam and Eve marks a seismic shift in the divine human relationship. The narrative, rich in symbolism and meaning, illustrates how their act of eating the forbidden fruit led to an immediate and drastic rupture in the harmonious relationship with God. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 400, articulates this change, describing how the original justice and harmony of creation were disrupted. 
this rupture led to a profound dissonance within the human soul and intellect, wounding the natural faculties and altering humanity's relationship with the rest of creation, which became alien and hostile. Concupiscence, the inclination towards sin. Concupiscence, as illuminated in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 405, is a critical concept in understanding the human condition post-fall. It refers to the deep-seated tendency within humans to lean towards sin. This inclination is a direct outcome of the original sin, symbolized by Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Although it is not a sin in itself, concupiscence is a consequence of sin that taints human nature. The fall marked a turning point in the human story. The harmony that once existed between humanity and God was disrupted, leaving humanity's will and intellect weakened. This weakened state implies that humans are now more prone to give in to temptation and less capable of discerning and doing good. It doesn't mean that human nature is wholly corrupt. But it does suggest that humanity is fundamentally wounded, struggling with an internal fracture that inclines itself towards evil. Original sin as delineated in Catholic theology is not a personal fault that individuals inherit from Adam and Eve. Instead, it's viewed as a deprivation of original holiness and justice. This inherited condition affects all of humanity and is evident in the universal tendency to sin. It's a state of being that exists from birth, predisposing individuals to commit acts contrary to God's will. Concupiscence and Human Suffering One of the most profound of effects of concupiscence is the way it subjects humanity to suffering and death. The Catechism highlights that human nature, wounded by original sin, is inclined to sin, and thus more susceptible to the physical and spiritual sufferings of life. This susceptibility marks every aspect of human existence, from personal struggles with sin, to the broader presence of evil in the world. The role of baptism and ongoing spiritual struggle. The church teaches that while baptism erases original sin, the effects of concup concupiscence remain. Baptized individuals are still inclined to sin, necessitating a lifelong spiritual struggle. The persistence of concupiscence after baptism underscores the need for continual grace and spiritual growth. It emphasizes the importance of seeking God's help in overcoming these inherent weaknesses and growing in virtue. Concu conclusion, concupiscence as a call to spiritual vigilance. Concupiscence represents a fundamental aspect of the human condition post-fall, a constant reminder of humanity's need for God's grace. It's not a curse but a challenge, inviting believers to be vigilant in their spiritual journey. This concept encourages introspection and continuous effort towards moral and spiritual improvement recognizing the ever-present need for divine assistance in overcoming the inherent inclination to sin. Understanding the Nature of Sin and Temptation The narrative of Genesis 3 serves as a profound exploration of the nature and allure of sin. 
The serpent's role in this story is emblematic of how temptation operates, often appearing appealing and harmless, yet leading to destructive consequences. It's a nuanced portrayal of how sin can be enticing, promising wisdom and fulfillment, but ultimately leading to separation from God. Understanding the serpent's role, symbolism, and significance. In this biblical account, the serpent is more than just a creature in the garden. It represents the cunning and deceptive aspects of sin. Its dialogue with Eve reveals how temptation twists truth and creates doubt. The serpent's question and insinuations about God's commandments are pivotal in swaying Eve's decision, illustrating how sin opens often begins with doubt and confusion. St. Augustine's Insight on Sin, Choosing the Lesser Goods St. Augustine's reflection in his confessions provide a deeper understanding of the nature of sin. He talks about sin as a disordered love, where individuals choose lesser temporal goods over the eternal goodness of God. This disordered love is evident in the decision of Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, seeking to gain knowledge and be like God, but without God. The subtlety of temptation, a modern reflection. In today's context, the story of Genesis 3 remains incredibly relevant. The temptation we face may not come in the form of a serpent and a forbidden fruit, but the essence remains the same. We are continually faced with choices where immediate gratification, power, wealth, or status can overshadow our moral and spiritual values. Sorry. The narrative invites us to introspect on how often we, like Adam and Eve, fall for the deceptive allure of these temptations. The challenge of prioritizing spiritual well-being. The struggle that Adam and Eve face in the, in the Garden of Eden mirrors our own. The challenge of prioritizing our spiritual well-being over worldly temptation. In a world inundated with materialistic allurements, and instant gratification. Maintaining a steadfast focus on spiritual values and God's commandments is increasingly ch challenging. Conclusion The Timeless Lesson of Genesis 3 Genesis 3 offers a timeless lesson on the nature of sin and temptation. It serves as a reminder of the subtlety and allure of sin the importance of discernment, and the need to prioritize our relationship with God above all. Understanding this story helps us navigate our lives with a clearer perspective on what truly matters and strengthens our resolve to choose the eternal goodness of God over the fleeting pleasures of the world. Free will and its misuse in the fall. The intricacies of free will in the Genesis narrative. The fall of Adam and Eve in Genesis is not just a story of disobedience, but a deep exploration of the complexities surrounding free will. This biblical account places free will at the heart of human interaction with the divine. When Adam and Eve choose to eat from the, uh, the tree of knowledge, they exercise their free will, but in a way that diverged from the path set by God. Their action transcends mere defiance of a divine command. It represents a profound existential struggle, 
a quest for autonomy and knowledge outside the boundaries set by God. This decision, while seemingly an act of independence, actually reflects a deeper issue, a mistrust in the providence and goodness of God. It's a misguided aspiration for equality with God, not in harmony, but in competition. Misguided autonomy and its consequences. This bid for autonomy is misdirected because it seeks a form of self-realization that is disconnected from the source of true life and wisdom, God himself. By choosing to act independently of God's will, Adam and Eve disrupted the natural order and harmony of creation, introducing disharmony and disconnection from God. John Paul II's Insight Rejection of Divine Fatherhood Pope John Paul II's interpretation in Reconciliation and Penance adds a profound dimension to our understanding of the fall. He views this, as, this act of disobedience as a rejection of God's fatherhood. This perspective is crucial as it frames the fall not just as a transgression, but as a fundamental refusal to accept the relationship of dependence and trust that characterizes a child's relationship with a father. The ripple effects on human psyche and relationships. This act of disobedience had far-reaching consequences affecting not only the relationship between humanity and God, but also the internal balance within the human psyche. It introduced a state of inner conflict and turmoil, where the harmony that once existed between human desires and divine will was disrupted. In modern life, the narrative resonates with the constant struggle to balance our desires for autonomy with our need for divine guidance. It serves as a reminder of the importance of aligning our will with God's and the dangers of pursuing paths that lead us away from His wisdom and love. Conclusion Free Will and Its Responsible Use in conclusion, the story of the fall in Genesis provides a profound reflection on the nature of free will and its responsible use. It teaches us that true freedom is found not in autonomy from God, but in harmonious relationship with Him. This narrative invites us to reflect on our own choices and extent to which they align with the divine will guiding us towards a life that is in true harmony with our Creator. Responding to Sin Pathways to Reconciliation Since after mass, the road to reconciliation. The fall of Adam and Eve sets a precedent for humanity's ongoing struggle with sin. However, Within this narrative lies a roadmap for reconciliation and healing. The scriptures, particularly the New Testament, offer profound insights and guidance on how we can confront and overcome our shortcomings and transgressions. St. Paul's letters in the New Testament are particularly instrumental in guiding us on this path. He calls on the faithful to resist the temptations that lead to sin. But his teaching goes beyond mere avoidance of wrongdoing. It is a call to actively cultivate virtues like righteousness, faith, love, and peace. St. Paul's exhortations are not just prohibitive, but are invitations to a positive way of life that aligns with God's will. The Role of the Church and the Sacraments 
The Church plays a crucial role in the journey of reconciliation. Through its sacraments, particularly confession and penance, the Church offers a tangible means to be for believers to express repentance and seek forgiveness. These sacraments are not mere rituals. They are profound encounters with God's grace and mercy. Confession allows for personal acknowledgement of sins before God. Represented by a priest, while penance provides a path to amend our ways and restore our relationship with God and the community. In the sacrament of confession, the faithful experience a deep spiritual cleansing. It is a place of honest self-reflection, acknowledgement of personal failings, and an open-hearted return to God. The act of verbalizing our sins to a priest acts as a powerful catalyst for inner transformation and renewal. Penance, open misunderstood as merely punitive, is fundamentally restorative. It's an opportunity to actively engage in acts that help heal the wounds caused by our sins. This could be in the form of prayers, acts of charity, or other deeds that demonstrate our commitment to change and to leave out the teachings of Christ. The Sacramental Journey, a Testament to Divine Mercy This sacramental journey of confession and penance is a testament to the church understanding of human frailty and God's boundless mercy. It is a journey from self-awareness to divine communion, reaffirming the belief that no matter how far we stray, the path back to God is always open. Conclusion, Embracing God's Mercy in Our Lives In summary, the story of the fall while highlighting the human propensity to sin, also illuminates the pathways to reconciliation. Through the teachings of St. Paul and the sacramental life of the Church, we find concrete steps to address our spiritual failings. This journey is a powerful reminder of God's unfailing mercy and His desire for all to return to Him. As we navigate our lives, these teachings and practices offer us guidance and hope, reminding us that no matter the depth of our fall, God's grace is always sufficient for our return and renewal. Proto-Evangelium A promise of redemption amidst despair The narrative of the fall in Genesis while painting a picture of disobedience and alienation from God, does not leave humanity in a state of hopeless despair. Instead, it introduces a profound promise of redemption, known as the Proto-Evangelium. Genesis 3.15 The verse is not just a mere scriptural detail. It is a pivotal moment in the biblical narrative marking the beginning of God's redemptive plan for humanity. The first announcement of the Gospel, Genesis 3:15. In this verse, often referred to as the first Gospel, a promise is made of enmity between serpent and the woman, and between their offspring. It prophesies that the woman's offspring will crush the serpent's head, symbolizing the ultimate defeat of sin and Satan. This passage is a beacon of hope, signifying that the fall is not the end of the story for humanity. Symbolism of God's clothing, Adam and Eve. Following their disobedience, Adam and Eve find themselves exposed and vulnerable. In a compassionate response, God clothes them. This act is deeply symbolic 
It represents God's mercy and care in the face of human failure. By clothing them, God provides protection and dignity, counteracting the shame and vulnerability brought about by sin. This gesture foretells the spiritual covering and restoration that would come through Christ. The foreshadowing of Christ's victory. The Proto-Evangelium is more than a mere promise. It is a foreshadowing of Christ's victory over sin and death. Yeah. It sets the stage for the coming of Jesus, who, as the offspring of the woman, would achieve the ultimate victory over Satan. This early promise in Genesis lays the foundation for the entire narrative of salvation that unfolds throughout the Bible. The Continuity of the Promise The theme of redemption initiated in Genesis 3.15 echoes throughout the Old Testament and finds its fulfillment in the New Testament. The coming of Jesus Christ, His life, death, resurrection are the culmination of this divine promise of a salvation in christ the damages wrought by the fall begin to be reversed and the path to reconciliation with god is open in christian theology this passage has immense significance it is seen as the first hint of the gospel message in the bible Theologians and scholars have viewed it as the initial glimmer of the salvific work of Christ, a thread that runs through the tapestry of Scripture, binding together the Old and New Testaments in a cohesive story of redemption. In conclusion, the Proto-Evangelium is not merely an ancient biblical text, but a living promise that continues to resonate with believers today. It reminds us that in the midst of our failures and brokenness of the world, God's plan for salvation and restoration is steadfast. This passage encourages us to look beyond our immediate circumstances to the ultimate victory in Christ. Embracing the hope and redemption offered to us through His sacrificial love. Conclusion, Embracing the Lessons of Genesis 3 In concluding this exploration of Genesis 3, we recognize that this chapter offers much more than a historical amount of humanity's first disobedience. It is a profound Reflection on the nature of human freedom, the allure of sin, and God's inexhaustible mercy. The story of the, fo the fall reminds us of our vulnerabilities and the temptations we face. Yet, more importantly, it highlights the omnipresent love of God and His unwavering plan for human salvation offering a message of hope and redemption that resonates across ages. As we continue our scriptural journey, let these lessons guide and inspire us to a deeper faith and understanding. Thank you for joining us today as we journey through the profound beginnings of Genesis 1-11, to exploring the foundations of our faith and the significance of creation humanity's unique role, and the Shabbat. It's incredible how these ancient narratives continue to illuminate our understanding and spiritual journey. But our exploration doesn't end here. What comes up to the beauty of creation and the sanctity of the Shabbat? We delve into the complexities of the human heart and God's unwavering mercy in our next episode. Join us as we uncover the layers of the fall and promise in Genesis 3. Understanding sin, its consequences, and the promise of God's infinite mercy. Don't miss out on this compelling continuation. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notified about our upcoming episodes. 
Together, we'll navigate these timeless stories and their implications for our lives today. Thank you for spending this time with us. Your journey through the scripture is just beginning, and we're excited to guide you every step of the way. Until next time, keep reflecting, keep questioning, and keep growing in